everyone, it's Dr. Calkins. We're gonna do some week two, chapter three questions that have been submitted through discussion forums or that I've traditionally had students ask for in the past um, as you get used to the discussion forum idea. So this one starts with a model of an atom. So we go down here to number four. This one students tend to ask about phosphorus 32. So what I like to do on these is to make a chart, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And what's noticeable about phosphorus is phosphorus is number 15. That means 15 protons. What we also want is this mass number of 32. That's going to be these two added together. And that's also going to help us with our answer um, because 15 and 17 make 32. This is a neutral atom, so it's going to have 15 um, protons and electrons. This would be charge. And again, this is mass number. So 32 needs a 17 to go with that 15, so there's that. A lot of students don't like math, and uh, they're not alone because I don't either. But these are percentage problems. It's piece uh, divided by the whole times 100. So in that idea, piece divided by the whole, what we have here is the percentage already, and we have the whole. So what we're missing is the piece, so some number, that's the piece, divided by the whole, which is 418 times 100, equals 34.5%. So there's a couple ways of doing this. You could just take each one of these answers and divide and see which one matches when you times it by 100. Or you could do what uh, algebra tell you to do in the reverse, and that's to uh, multiply these on both sides. When you do that, you get um, 418 times this is a decimal when you uh, divide both sides by 100. 0.345. That'll give you the same answer that you've gotten either way, and that was it. So the piece was 144. When you divide that, you'll get that answer back. So there's two ways to do that one. Either way, you're going to get that 144 grams. Number seven is basically the same thing, just in a different way. Here they say this sample of hematite, which is your hole, has 2.41 grams of your iron. So we take the piece, which is 2.41, divide it by the whole, which is 3.45, times that by 100, and you get the answer in your calculator of 70%. I think it's like 69.9%, but it rounds up. And number nine, same idea. They already give you the chart. You just need to know that if you're 16 on the periodic table, you're going to be sulfur. Sulfur is number 16. So that gets rid of argon, that gets rid of chlorine. Now we have two sulfurs left. So this alone told us sulfur. 16 and 17 say that we need to add up to 33. And this one adds up to 34. So now we already know the answer. 16 subtract 18. So 16 minus 18 is a negative two, but both of those had negative two. So that's how you do number nine and problems like it. This 33 was the mass number. Mass number is always this upper left number. Charge is always the upper right. So again, that's the subtraction of protons and electrons or the addition of protons and neutrons that gives you that mass number. Um, very important for this chapter to know the difference between those two. Number 15 says, which of the following elements may have a cation of 16 electrons? To be a cation and to be positive, we just need to have more protons than those number of electrons. So we have chlorine, phosphorus, silicon, and sulfur. So we find chlorine. Chlorine has 17 protons that are positive. We have phosphorus that has 15 positive protons. Silicon with 14. That's where our atomic number comes in. And sulfur, which is 16. So if we subtract 16, if we're positive, we're the answer. So 17 minus 16 electrons would give you a positive one, and that's the answer for number 15. For practice, so let's do the rest. This would be 15 minus 16 electrons. That would be phosphorus with a negative one. Uh, silicon, if we subtract 16, we would get a negative two. And then here, 16 minus 16 that would give us the neutral sulfur uh, atom. So again, only one positive is the one that has more protons than those number of electrons. 
Number 19 is definitely the toughest math problem of the homework. You need to do the same thing we did earlier, and that's take, uh, I'll do that up here, 6.08 grams, and then divide it by, since these are two pieces, they're not joined in this compound, we need to add those together, so 6.08 and 13.92. Times that by 100, and what we're looking for is about 30.4%. So if this is 30.4%, in this case we did nitrogen, so this is grams of nitrogen, so percent nitrogen. We just need to match this percentage to one of these three or four answers and go from there. If we look at the periodic table, we can kind of cheat on this first one. If nitrogen and oxygen are about the same mass, 14 and 16, 14 and 16 says that if we were to take N divided by N plus O on the periodic table times it by 100, it's gonna be pretty close to 50-50. And if you were to do this, you would get 46.6%, uh, and that's not 30.4%. You could continue to do that on this one. You would take two nitrogens, you divide it by two nitrogens, plus five oxygens on the periodic table. So basically two 14s divided by two 14s plus our uh, five 16s times it by 100. You're gonna get fairly close on this one, but it's not gonna match, it's gonna be 26 percent nitrogen which is not a match to the 30.4 nitrogen dioxide you could almost guess this had to be the answer because it's basically one-thirds two-thirds and this is about a third although these other ones could have been close as well so if you take nitrogen divided by nitrogen plus two oxygens I'll work this one out times 100 that would be 14 divided by notice there's only one of those 14 plus two sixteenths times 100 and you do get 30.4%, which is what we want for NO2. Number 22 says, which one has more electrons? More electrons, so we need to go to the periodic table. Uh, rubidium has 37 protons, so it has 37 electrons. So 37 electrons there. Arsenic, take away three. So arsenic, go back three, that's gonna give you 30, like zinc. Bromide, which is Br negative, that's 35, add one, that's 36. So far the winner is still rubidium at 37. Strontium, take away two. Strontium has 38, but when we take away two, we go back to 36. So that one's actually tied with bromine. So the winner there with 37 is rubidium. 23, a little bit easier, only because um, if you have more protons than electrons, you're positive, and magnesium's positive. These would have more electrons, so they would be uh, anions, and then this one has the same number of protons as electrons because it's a neutral element. So if you have more protons, you're gonna be more positively charged, and that's the case here. 24 is related to a final exam question, and if you're most chemically similar, you're in the same family. And for phosphorus, look down its family and up its family, that's family 15. So the answers would be nitrogen, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. And we see here that arsenic is a choice. So oxygen, selenium, and sulfur, these are actually all in group 16. So they're similar, but phosphorus is gonna be similar to group 15 like arsenic and phosphorus and nitrogen and others. Number 27 says, which is a pair of isotopes? Definition of an isotope means the same protons, but different neutrons. So your mass number is gonna change. Here you have oxygen and fluorine, that's different protons. Calcium and magnesium, that's different ions of different protons. Here we have uranium and neptunium. They have the same mass number, but a different number of protons. Here we have mercury and mercury, which is the same number of protons, and then different number of neutrons because their mass has changed. Number 30, really fast if you know what to look for. Mass number is irrelevant, so don't worry about it. What's important about X is this is the atomic number for X. So just find 25 on the periodic table, and you're gonna find the answer. So in this case, manganese. Uh, 
is number 25. Last section that students struggle with is this last one here. Um, students also struggle with something very similar up here with number 45. So let's skip that one. The most stable isotope of oxygen is eight neutrons. We can estimate the most stable isotope based on its mass of 16. So if oxygen, protons, neutrons, electrons is most oftenly uh, has a mass of 16. We know because of its atomic number, number 8. That's what we can find out the periodic table. So again, we're stealing that from here, number 8. If that makes 16, that would be 8 neutrons most often. So does the most stable have 8 neutrons? We're saying probably. So that one was true. We're going to use that same idea at the bottom and work these through. So I'm going to do a proton, neutron, electron chart for each one of these. And once you do this, it's going to be easier to go back and answer questions once you have all that information instead of trying it one by one by one. So the first thing I would do is find the protons just based on the symbol. So chlorine is 17. Check. Helium is number two. Sodium, number 11. Phosphorus, number 15. And then hydrogen, uh, that's number one. So that's our first step, get the protons down. Second step would be the mass number. The mass numbers are in this upper left corner. That needs to be the addition of these two. So to get 35, you're gonna need 18. To get four, you're gonna need two plus two. To get 23, we're gonna need a 12 and an 11. To get 30, we need a 15 and a 15. And to get a one, we need a one and a zero. So those two numbers are always gonna give you that upper left corner. Last thing is electrons. Electrons would be subtracting these two numbers. So what number minus the answer in our case gives us negative one. Well, that's 17 minus 18 gives us negative one. Helium has a positive, so two minus one gives you one left over. Sodium has a positive. We have 11, so that's 10. 11 minus 10 gives you positive one. Here we have no charge. No charge just means same number. And then here we have a positive. We already have a positive, so that has no electrons, that's why Hydrogen positive is often called a proton. We'll see that in the acid base chapter, and that's because it is a proton. So now let's answer these questions because now we have all the information we need to make it a little bit easier. So when it says has a number of electrons equal to neutrons, electron, uh, electrons equal to neutrons, that shows up here, shows up here. This technically doesn't have any, so it doesn't count. But different from protons, so different from protons, same as protons. So this one matches straight across. Has no electrons. Well, that's this category here. Has a nuclear charge of 15. They're really just saying who is number 15 because you're gonna have 15 positive charges when that's the case. And that's phosphorus there. Has a number of neutrons twice that electrons. Neutrons twice that electrons is there. and then has 10 electrons, that's the only one left, but also sodium in its noble gas configuration with 10 like neon. So hopefully that gives you some help on this particular chapter early in the semester as you move on to week three and the electrons in more detail next chapter.